Chapter 10, Learning Objective 2. Record and disclose preferred and common share transactions including share splits. Shares have a stated, or nominal, value, the amount for which they are issued. Alternatively, but rarely, shares will have a par value which is the amount stated in the corporate charter below which shares cannot be sold upon initial offering. For consistency, we will assume all shares have a stated value. To demonstrate the issuance and financial statement presentation of shares, let's assume that New World Corporation is authorized to issue share capital consisting of an unlimited number of voting common shares, and 100,000 non-voting preferred shares. Transaction 1. On January 1, 2023, New World sells 1,000 common shares to its first shareholders for $10 per share, or $10,000 cash. New World records the following entry which includes a debit to cash and corresponding credit to common shares for $10,000. Transaction 2. On February 1, 2023, 2,500 preferred shares are issued to the owner of land and buildings that have a fair value of $35,000 and $50,000, respectively. The journal entry to record this transaction includes a debit to land for $35,000, a debit to building for $50,000, and a credit to preferred shares for $85,000. Usually, one or more individuals decide to form a corporation, and before the corporation is created, may then use their own funds to pay for legal and government fees, travel and promotional costs, etc. When the corporation is legally formed, it is not unusual for the corporation to issue shares to these organizers for these expenditures which are commonly referred to as organization costs, or startup costs, and are expensed. Transaction 3. On March 1, 2023, 500 common shares are issued to the organizers of New World to pay for their services, valued at $5,000. The entry to record this transaction includes a debit to organization expense and a credit to common shares for $5,000. Now, assuming no further share transactions and a retained earnings balance of $480,000, the equity section of the New World Corporation balance sheet would show the following at December 31, 2023. When there is more than one share capital account, like we have in our example, a heading labeled Contributed Capital is required. Within contributed capital, we have preferred shares and the proper disclosure on the balance sheet includes the number of shares authorized, or available for sale, in this case 100,000, and how many are issued and outstanding, in this case, 2,500, which were issued for $85,000. Then we have common shares, unlimited shares authorized, 1,500 shares issued, were sold, and outstanding and the total received for these shares, also known as paid-in capital, is $15,000. Preferred shares are always disclosed before common shares. Then, we have retained earnings of $480,000, resulting in total equity of $580,000. Corporate legislation permits a company to reacquire some of its shares, provided that the purchase does not cause insolvency. A company can repurchase and then cancel the repurchased shares. When repurchased shares are cancelled, they are no longer issued and no longer outstanding. A company can also repurchase shares and then hold them in treasury. Treasury shares are issued but not outstanding. A company can use treasury shares for purposes such as giving to employees as an incentive or bonus. Let's see what an acquisition of shares looks like with transaction 4. Assume that New World Corporation decides to repurchase 200 common shares on December 1, 2024 and hold them in treasury. Let's also assume that the price of each share is the average issue price of the outstanding common shares, or $10. The journal entry to record the repurchase includes a debit to common shares and credit to cash for $2,000. Assuming no further transactions, the equity section of the New World Corporation balance sheet would show the following at December 31, 2024. The preferred shares hasn't changed after this transaction so we still show 100,000 shares authorized, 2,500 of which are issued and outstanding, for total paid-in capital of $85,000. Then we have common shares, unlimited shares authorized, 1,500 shares issued, but now only 1,300 shares outstanding. This means that 200 shares are sitting in treasury. The total proceeds for the common shares that are outstanding was $13,000, for total contributed capital of $98,000.
then we have retained earnings of $480,000, no change here, resulting in total equity of $578,000. Notice that the repurchase of shares caused a decrease in the paid-in capital for the common shares, a $2,000 decrease, and a decrease in the number of shares outstanding, 200 shares. If the 200 shares had been cancelled, both the number of shares issued and outstanding would have decreased by 200 shares. Now let's consider the retirement of shares with transaction 5. On December 15, 2024, New World Corporation purchased and cancelled 100 common shares. The purchase price is $9, which is less than the average issue price of $10 per share. The entry for this transaction would include a debit to common shares for $1,000, calculated as 100 shares repurchased at their average issue price of $10. Cash will be credit for $900, calculated as 100 shares repurchased at a cost of $9. The balancing amount is a credit to an account called contributed surplus for share retirement of $100. This represents the $1 difference between the issue price and repurchase price. The contributed surplus account is reported in the equity section of the balance sheet, below the share accounts. The share accounts and the contributed surplus account are subtotaled and reported as total contributed capital of $99,100 as shown here. If you were to compare this to the balance sheet without the repurchase, the preferred share disclosure is unchanged, but now the common shares show unlimited shares authorized and only $1,400 issued and outstanding with the value of $14,000. Now let's consider a share retirement situation with the shares repurchased for an amount above the average issue price in transaction 6. Assume now that New World Corporation also repurchased and cancels another 150 common shares on December 17, 2024, at a price of $11, which is more than the average issue price of $10 per share, calculated as $14,000 divided by 1,400 shares. The entry to record this transaction includes a debit to common shares of $1,500, calculated as 150 shares repurchased times the $10 average issue price. Cash is credited for $1,650, calculated as the 150 shares repurchased at a price of $100. Now comes the tricky part. Next, we must first use up any existing contributed surplus account arising from any previous share repurchases. So we debit the contributed surplus for shares retired for $100 from the previous transaction, and then apply the remaining leftover amount of $50 as a debit to retained earnings. The excess of the $11 purchase price over the average shares issue price of $10 totals $150, $1 times 150 shares. This would normally be debited to retained earnings. However, in this case, New World has an existing contributed surplus account balance of $100 from the December 15 shares cancellation that should be set to zero before debiting the remaining amount to retained earnings. In this case, the contributed surplus account is to be netted to zero by debiting contributed surplus $100, with the $50 remaining amount debited to retained earnings. Now let's move on to share splits. A corporation may find its shares are selling at a high price on a stock exchange, perhaps putting them beyond the reach of many investors. To increase the marketability of a corporation's shares, management may opt for a share split. A share split increases the number of shares issued and outstanding, and lowers the cost of each new share. The originally issued shares are exchanged for a larger number of new shares. Assume that on December 1, 2025, New World Corporation declares a 3-4-1 common share split. This results in three new common shares replacing each currently issued and outstanding common share. The number of issued and outstanding shares has now been tripled, and the market price of each share will decrease to about one-third of its former market price. Since there is no change in the dollar amount of common shares, no debit credit entry is required to record the share split. Instead, a memorandum entry would be recorded in the general ledger indicating the new number of shares issued and outstanding, as shown here. The dollar amount shown on the balance sheet and statement of changes in equity will not change. The only change is an increase in the number of issued and outstanding common shares. After the share split, the equity section of the New World Corporation would appear as shown here. The preferred share section and disclosures remains unchanged. 
Now for common shares, we still disclose unlimited shares authorized, but now 4,500 shares issued and 3,900 shares outstanding. These are simply the amounts prior to the split multiplied by 3. The paid-in capital for common shares remains the same at $13,000, as does total contributed capital at $98,000 and total equity at $578,000.